Hello everyone, this is Varstrom here, and I hope you will be happy with our first static comparison of the TSDZ-8 VS BBS-02B from last time. Today I will be disassembling the TSDZ-8 motor, examining the construction inside, and doing a brief comparison with the BBS-02B and TSDZ-2B to see if Tong Sheng's new high-power motors meet our needs. Sorry for the delay in posting this video. The plan was to post this video at the beginning of May, but due to a variety of things, it has been delayed until the middle of May. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll remove the three Allen screws that hold the controller. Unlike the BBS-02B, it's not necessary to remove the main gear cover in order to access the controller. It's also the case with the BBS-HD, Then we have to disconnect a few connectors, namely the three phases cables, the induction ring of the torque sensor, the pedaling sensor, and the hall sensors. I put a BBS controller next to it for you to see how they resemble Pause to view if you need to. On the TSDZ-2B, the plotting of the electrical components and the cooling were not the best. They have improved that on the TSDZ-8, so failures due to excess of moisture are less likely to happen. There's a sheet gasket for waterproofing the interface between the controller and the case, while Bafang used a rubber one. I've carefully done that before, but it's pretty easy to damage the wires here, trying to remove the silicone and the small gasket. Let's proceed and take out the stator. It is brand new, so it should be easy enough, but depending on wear and tear, it could be harder to take it out. This is a full view of the stator for a cursory viewing. There's another sheet gasket here, and as you can see, it's really easy to rip it off. Here's a BBS-02B stator. Here again, they quite strikingly resemble. Without being too complex or technical, here are a few comparison points to be noted. Pause to watch if you need to. Let's get on with the boring disassembly. This part can break too if you don't proceed with caution. Carefully tightening two long enough screws will do the job and take it out. Note that this process is exactly the same on the BBS units. The nylon gear, its job is to transmit the power to the pinion gear and the main gear. Compared with the BBS-02B nylon gear, the one of the TSDZ-8 is wider and larger. This should improve the reliability of the nylon gear. On the counterpart, it holds tight on the pinion gear's axle, 
so you'll have to replace both if it eventually fails, which could be a little bit more costly. Continue with the boring disassembly. To get to the next highlighted section, skip to 556 if you don't need the disassembly process. This oil seal on the axle is another fragile part. It's less likely to be as efficient as before you removed it. This video is not meant to be a tutorial, so watch out what you're doing if you want to dismantle your unit. I'll gently tap with a hammer on the axle, but if you want to do it, please use a rubber mallet. The torque sensor is much like the same as the one of TSDZ2, but it has a compression bearing instead of plastic spacers, which is an improvement. The pass magnet disc is more exposed on the BBS unit. It's built in on the TSDZ, so again, it will be more reliable, but it could be potentially costly and or harder to replace. But the induction ring here can break if you're not careful enough when you put everything back on your motor. Okay, basically finished disassembling all the valuable accessories. Let's go to the summary page. Here's my summary of the five important summary points. Pause to watch or take a screenshot if you need to. Okay, that's all I've got for this video. I'll be installing this motor in the next installment and showing you a few things to look out for. This is Varstrom, and I'll see you in the next video.